Okay, we've got the basic kit running pretty well now, but to make it more competitive, we're going to increase the power to the motors and we're going to increase the processing speed with some simple modifications. Before I speed the mouse up anymore, I'm going to ensure that the encoders are working as well as I possibly can because they need to be very precise if your mouse is running a lot faster. Here is a simple program which I'm just going to load in. This allows me to turn the worms by hand. As you can see here I can turn the worm gear very slowly and ensure that half a turn puts the light on and half a turn doesn't. And the same with this one here. Right, I'm just going to make the right hand encoder a bit more sensitive, so I'm just going to ease the worm gear down. Okay, that's much better now. That's on for half a turn and off for half a turn. That's good. Okay, I'm replacing the 18X and the 28X1 with a, with a new chip, a 28X2, because this will allow both the programs to be run on the one chip and a lot faster. Also, I've also got a resonator here, which is a 10 MHz resonator, which will solder in at the bottom, which will allow the 28X2 to run at 40 MHz, which should prevent all the very small pauses the mouse makes when it's having to make a decision. Right, I've put the 28X2 in and the 10 MHz resonator. I've also added three wire links, which will allow the 28X2 to control the button and the two LEDs that the 18X were controlling. The original 5 volt regulator is supplying the power to the motor driver chips, but we're going to add in an additional regulator with a variable voltage taken directly from the battery. So I'm going to put this is a very simple circuit, it's only got four components. I'm going to fix the variable regulator there. A pot there so that we can turn it with a screwdriver to vary the voltage. We're also going to drill out this square via, this little square via that will connect the original supply to the motor driver chips and we're going to add a wire from the centre pin of the on off switch through the regulator to that square via there. This will allow you to apply far more power to the motors, but will allow you to control it very, very simply. I've got a new regulator on there now, and I'm using a high capacity rechargeable battery. You can adjust the regulator with the pot, and what I've done is I've adjusted it to 7.5 volts using a tester without the, without the motors turning. I think this will give it about as much power as you can actually get out of the 9 volt battery. I've got the debug program running in here, reading the front sensor. And I'm going to show the different levels that different walls will give you. This is the wall that they use in the Birmingham UK competition. And that gives me a reading of 50 at a set distance. We can move on to, these are hand painted, I've actually sprayed these with a matte white and that's going to give me a reading of 46, which is slightly less. Another popular maze edge is also the plastic maze edges, but they're even less reflective, and that's going to give me a reading of 45. And the, and the MDF wall gives me a reading of 40. So the difference between an MDF wall at 40 and the difference between the walls used in the UK competition in Birmingham is 50 means that your sensors will need to be set up depending on what maze you're actually running on. I'm just altering the numbers which I recorded earlier along with the straight line setting I've set up and we're going to load that up into, into this mouse. This is the 28X2 program which comes on the CD. I'm going to do a very simple test here. I've set the center square to B0 as opposed to 87, which is the normal center square. And here we're going to run the mouse up and down. It will do a 180 degree turn and come back and 180 degree turn and keep going backwards and forwards. This way we can make sure that we've got the 
straight line, make, it, make sure it's going in a straight line, we've got a little bit of a curve there, and we can also make sure that the 180 degree turn is correct. Looking at this, I seem to have got the 180 pretty good, and the straight line seems to be fairly good. Okay, this is a simple test. I've now changed the centre square to F1, which is this square here. So that will make the mouse travel up, round and back down. To do a U-turn, come up, round and back down. This way we can test to see if it's straightening, so it's using the right hand wall straightening sensor to see, make sure that level is correct. When it comes around here and does a U-turn and comes back this way, it's now using the left hand wall straightening sensor. So we can ensure that the mouse is running in the middle. We can also see with these white dots, which I've put where I want the wheels to lock to do the turn, we can also see if the mouse overshoots on the turn or under, undercuts the turn and also the, the distance after the turn, whether that's correct, whether it's under or over. And we can adjust these accordingly in the program. So we'll give that a little run. Okay, that's not far out. So we can now remove the walls and we can see if the 90 degree turn is, is good. That looks fairly good. Now that seems to be running fairly well. Okay, here we're going to set up the reset front wall sensor. As a mouse turns round, it should be pretty much running along this line. But we can force it to turn earlier by putting the wall in front. So we'll pull a wall here. It should reset on the front wall sensor and cut the corner. Hopefully all these settings will be pretty close and we should be able to give it a run in the maze. A refined version of the software that PIC1 used to achieve fourth place in the 2009 finals. So hopefully this will be running pretty competitively, so let's have a little go. There is probably some still some fine tuning elements that can be done to it. And like I say, different maze services will require different setups. I can see the turnaround is slightly too far now, but we, we can tweak that. Apart from that, it seems to be going quite well. Okay, we've ran the mouse in the maze. We're just going to extract the maze map from it, just to make sure it hasn't made any mistakes. And just hold button A down. That's it. And hopefully the maze map will be exactly identical to the maze, and it is. So that's pretty much it. There you go, that is a, a complete full working micro mouse that's taken about a day to put together it's got a nice competitive speed it hasn't cost a great deal to do it either that's it really I hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, I look forward to seeing people making some of these mice go a lot quicker than I can uh, and good luck